Hi, it's John from Dynaspectrum. This is a quick video on ignition timing on DASA using a DS1. Like many of the tuning related tables, these are in the flex field and map switching folder. Whilst there are other ignition tables and folders here, many of which are not actually used in the normal tuning situation where you're at full throttle, where the charge flaps are open and where you're on the high lift cam rather than the special low lift cam, and where your valve timing is near to target on both the intake and the exhaust sides. We only show you the ones that are relevant to tuning and these are the only ones that we blend by ethanol content. So if we go into map switch one, which is designed for blending between 93 octane, 98 ron and ethanol, I'll show you here the relevant ignition tables. Here we've got the one for gasoline and the one for ethanol. Engine load, as explained in the previous video, is on the x-axis and engine speed is on the y-axis. So if you look at a typical area in the mid-range, you'll be across here somewhere depending on the octane. And you might have on gasoline six, seven, eight, nine degrees, and then as the engine load reduces, you might have 13 at the top. On ethanol, a couple of degrees more, up to 10 degrees more in places. And if you then have a look on a data log, this is the data log I just showed in a previous video for boost control. So I'm gonna move over to the left here and add onto this graph some ignition timing. Let's have ignition on cylinder one. So here we've got similar sort of numbers, nine degrees in the mid-range, 23 degrees at the top. In this case, there is no knock because we are on plenty of ethanol. The ethanol content is 62% here. And also worth looking at the charge temperature, even though this is on a dyno, it's only 37 degrees Celsius, so it's quite cool. There's nothing really going to make this car particularly knock. And so these values for ignition time that we're using are based around our testing of trying to use the minimum ignition timing that we can get away with to get the best torque without having knock. And we might not even chase the best torque as we've discussed in a previous video, especially in the mid-range. We might pull a little bit of timing out so that we don't get as high peak cylinder pressures, especially on ethanol. So we've got our ignition timing here. We can see it on other cylinders as well, but on DAZA, with no knock, there is no difference between the ignition timing on each cylinder. The only reason this moves is just because of the auto scaling. So you can see ignition actual, which shows you all cylinders. If this is a four litre, you see a lot of jostling in this. If you had knock on some cylinders, you would see this jumping up and down as well. In this case, all cylinders are the same and it smoothly progresses, much in concert with how you'd expect it to. On this map here, running from here and dogging lugging across to here. Now, the thing that determines the blend between the gasoline and the ethanol map is the ethanol percentage to ignition blend. You remember that the ethanol percentage was in the 60s, well, that means we're 100%, which means we're using all the ethanol map. You can change this how you like. You can change the values for different breakpoints, and these are all, of course, smoothly interpolated so that if you're going between E25 and E37.5, you're not going to jump between 50 and 75% blending between this and this map. You're going to do it smoothly. And if you want particular detail at certain points, you can do that. You may also notice that you can use different blending for different types of tables, but here we're talking about ignition, so we're just going to use, just going to talk about that. In terms of knock control, let's find some knock tables. In the knock folder, we have some knock detection factors for each cylinder. Let's have a look. 
we don't actually change these because we find that the stop settings and stopping terminals are good. We don't need to make the ECU deaf to not to try and get enough timing in to make good power and torque. We believe it's real not because when we add ethanol, this goes away. So we don't increase these. Some tuners like to increase these to stop a bit more timing in. They're based on engine load and RPM. And they're basically a factor involved in noise level calculations. If you increase these, then you make the ECU more deaf to not. I wouldn't. If you've got pistons of different materials, of different resonance, if the piston to wall clearance is different, they might make a bit more noise. Or if you're into experimental cans that have different characteristics, different noise levels, you might even make a block out of different materials. That's really when I think you should be changing these. But if you're using fuel that could not, I don't think you want to.